Hey everyone, I just wanted to talk about some of the tools that I've been developing for this current project using the geometry script in Unreal Engine 5. Everything you can see here in this sequence has been made using procedural tools that then bake out to nanite meshes. So everything here is nanite as well. So that includes the walls, the windows, the floors and ceilings, the roof, the stairs and a bunch of other stuff. Um, all of them are made using procedural tools in blueprints and then baked out to nanite. Um, it just lets me really quickly generate architecture, environment, uh, and then assign textures as I need to. Um, so yeah, shout out to Ryan Schmidt at Epic and Volkiller Games as well for kind of giving me a few ideas on how I could go about this and take it further. All right, so the first tool is the um, floor builder. And it's very simple. It just uses a spline to inform a, a, a polygonal extruded mesh in the um, dynamic mesh. Uh, yep, you can add as many spline points as you like. You can make all sorts of kind of strange, uh, strangely shaped rooms and corners and whatever you need. Um, yeah, it just, uh, let me bring that back to being a square again. Uh, it's just got some simple settings so we can change the floor height depending on if you want to fill a space or have something very thin. Uh, we can change the UV scale. All that is handled via GeoScript projection. Um, the rotation of the UV so we can you know, if you wanted to have your floorboards off on 90 degrees, uh, you could do that. And yeah, this can be used for, I, I use this for ceilings as well. So on the underside, I'm projecting a ceiling texture. Um, and all the textures can be changed here. We've just got, you know, material top, material bottom and side material. And it's pretty simple. So yeah, mo most of these, most of the functions of these tools, I've just taken from the Lyra starter game that you can download from the Unreal Store for free. Um, and just tweak them and change them to my liking really some those tools are actually quite simple relative to what GeoScript can do you know there's so there's so many more tools and functions in GeoScript that just go unused in the Lyra starter demo there's massive potential here so anyway this one all you, all you do then is this this is a dynamic mesh at the moment and it won't won't run in game they're designed to disappear in game because they're too cumbersome on the system um, i presume there is a way you can generate dynamic geo in game but i'm not using it that way i'm just using it to make pre-baked meshes so the way you do that is you just you hit generate static mesh and then you go swap to static mesh and there you go there is a piece of nanite so if i show you in the nanite visualizer there are the I like triangles um, and yeah okay so next tool is the wall tool um, there's a lot more going on here uh, although it is still in its essence quite simple so all it's doing again is using a spline to place or it's called append in GeoScript append boxes uh, and each box is then scaled to uh, to height and width and whatever else you need. So, yep, there's height and width. Just set these back to 20, which is my standard wall height. All right. So, yeah. You, and so you can do all sorts of different angles um, and heights uh, depending on what you need. But I'm just going to do a square for the purposes of this demonstration. Keep it simple. Yep, I'll keep one end open as well. All right, so yeah, that's the wall builder, and you can see the geo is uh, really, really simple as well. It's just ball together boxes. Very, very simple. Um, I can change again. I can change the I can change the wall thickness if I want to, so that changes it there. Really powerful. I can um, change the UV scale like before, so. And there you go. I have them all set to a standard size, so they they sort of universally all fit together. Um, I can then I can add mouldings. So uh, I you can see here there's a baseboard, 
a data rail and a cornice and each one of those things can be adjusted so you can see it there adjusting as a, as you add more geometry G, um, GeoScript can tend to uh, chug a bit but you can you can there's lots of different ways you can optimize things I'll probably go back and re-optimize these at some point but yeah uh, there's the you can change the data height and fly right off the top of the model if you want to um, and then the baseboard height so I just have all these set to a standard set of sizes so everything fits together properly um, you can also turn them off as well so if you just want the cornice or the baseboard like a lot of rooms have not all rooms have a dado rail then you can get rid of that but let's just keep them there for the time being just switch them off all right then the next thing you can do with these walls is you can use cutters so i developed this tool which basically allows me to drop in another dynamic mesh and it detects um, what shapes it's interacting with and then automatically cuts them so I can then cut a hole in this wall so let me just cut like a standard door let's raise that up a bit uh, I can duplicate that and let's say I can like make a window here maybe and yeah these are all cut and you can see I just dropped it in it's immediately cutting the geometry and it's creating the most minimum minimum wireframe it possibly can um, but saying that if you did want to use the mesh uh, for vertex painting later what you can do is you can subdivide and you get all these vertex faces and that lets you that'll let you mesh paint later Unfortunately, mesh painting at the moment isn't supported by Nanite, but I'm, hopefully it'll be down the road. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty powerful feature uh, to have. And yep, these things also cut the moldings, but you start to really incur, whoops, that one's missing. There we go. Uh, you start to incur a bit of a performance penalty when you, when you have multiple cutters and more, m more script going on basically. So you can see if I, now try and change the height it will start chugging a bit there's a sort of maybe a half second quarter second delay there uh, but you know it's a small price considering what you can achieve very quickly you know how long a part like this would take you in blender uh, to texture and model and everything and then make bespoke and then there are thousands there's going to be thousands of these in the project that i'm working on so it's very you know it's, it's very useful to have these uh, and yep, yeah, like before, you just bake to a new static mesh and then uh, swap to a static mesh. And there it is. This is, again, it's all it's all nanite. So if I go to the triangles, you see I've kept the vertex, but I didn't, didn't really need to do that. So if I wanted to go back and change that, what I can easily do is I can swap back to the generated mesh. And now it's dynamic again. Uh, and I can turn off in the settings subdivide wherever that's gone there we go and now it's back to wireframe and then to update the static mesh um, all I do is just go bait static mesh and that then updates the corresponding static mesh and swap back to it and there you go pretty simple one thing I should say here about <clears throat> these baked static meshes is that um, you can clone them so let's say I put a bunch out in the world uh, and I use them on other objects by the way they're all stored I've just stored them in the subfolder of the level uh, but you can the Lyra demo game stores them in the plugin folder you can basically you can store them based on what they are or you know where they are in the world you could set up all sorts of different things to store them in different places but yeah I've just got them in the in the level subfolder for generators here's all the bits um but you can yeah you can it, it operates just like a regular mesh once it's generated and goes into a subfolder but yeah let's say we did something we were like okay uh actually all of the for all the buildings that contain that mesh we've decided that the floor is going to be uh, a different height you can very very quickly um change that so when you bake to that static mesh uh it updates all the others so they're all linked because they're all the same mesh basically uh, but i'll reset that now 
Um, another another thing that uh, is that I've coded into this wall into this wall builder is I swap back to a static mesh again. Um, I've made it so each whenever a segment of wall is made, it creates a new material slot. So you can see here, there's the the material slots for this wall piece. So what I can do is I can come along. I've got my materials off screen a little bit, but you can imagine what's going on. Is you know I can drop in materials here, and each each segment has like a different uh, slot. So yeah, you can you can build out a whole perimeter wall with this. Although I wouldn't recommend it because uh, with Lumen it's good to keep parts as small, relatively small, not you know not the smallest possible, but apparently Lumen behaves better with you know relatively even sized pieces rather than like an entire building that's one single mesh it's better to break the building down into smaller meshes uh, but you could do like several the perimeter of several rooms with these and then add different um, materials to different walls so yeah let's change this up all right, so next up is the somewhat more complicated uh, roof builder. Um, this is just to basically cover 90% of the cases of roofs in the game uh, that weren't hero roofs, but needed to have some form of geometry or shape given to them. Uh, there's lots of work to be done on this, but I'll show you where it is in its current state. Uh, so you can see it's just got a width, depth and height slider. So you can change that and what it's doing is yeah it's creating a little overhang of the tiles on the gable end it adds these ridge tiles that are all slightly wonky just as they are in reality on the, these UK roofs um, yep and it also adds a I don't know if we can see this here we go adds a little skirt wall around the edge which just makes it easier to build with because basically what I tend to do is I'll just clone the floor up and that saves a lot of time for each room I'll just move the floor up and then you can see how now there's this kind of strange lip created well that skirt wall just fits on there basically uh, but I can decide not to do that if I want to so I can just uncut the base and just leave it as a seat see once I do that it creates a ceiling texture so if I felt lazy and I didn't want to do that. I could just drop the roof on as a as a ceiling in itself. And you can see there it has overlapped the cornice. There we go. Yep. Uh, what else does it do? So it also uh, has the ability to cut a loft. So if I go here, uh, and then I'm going to have to cut it so just like with the walls you can use a cutting tool to cut windows in it um, so there we go there's there's our cut just get it into a reasonable place and then you can see inside there is actually a cavity now maybe if I don't render the floor it'll be easier so if I cut the base yeah there we go all right uh, and once you're in the loft, you can then change the uh, ceiling height from the apex. So depending how much of that you want, uh, you can change the wall height. Uh, that was very complicated to calculate. So you'll notice what happens with this. If I select the loft again, is that the wall height stays consistent no matter the height or width of the loft piece itself. It will always stay consistently at the cons same consistent height. So, if you have interlocking gabled roofs, uh, they will their wall will all be at the same height. It's a bit difficult to explain, but yes, if, if as the roof gets more complicated, uh, you need consistent bits of architecture like that. All right, and then the last trick up its sleeve is tessellation. So, what it does is it takes a height map from this texture and it applies a tessellation to these these wings on the side oh yeah before i do that actually you can actually you can have uh, angled gables as well 
So you can do away with a gable that might have a window in it and just have an angle. And each one of those is individually adjustable as well. And you can see the tiles are just at the top too. So there's an, an awful lot of freedom uh, to, to adjust things with this roof. But yeah, let me, before I show the tessellation, I may as well line it up. Uh, tall, okay, yeah, that'll do. And we don't need, yeah, why not? We'll just use it as a roof so we won't cut the base either. And then we've got a ceiling. Uh, yeah, so then what we do is this is gonna lag, but we can then go to the tiles and then they'll think about it for a minute. And then, yeah, there we go. Basically using the, um, the tile material, it creates a, um, a projection using tessellation. So you can see here it's cleaned up, which looks kind of messy, but Hey, it does the job. Um, so yeah, then we can bake that to a mesh and then swap to static mesh. And then there we go. This is basically a tiny house. And these buildings over here are just made all using very, very similar techniques. Oh yeah, that reminds me. There's one more tool I want to cover. Actually two. All right, next up is the window builder. So this is probably even more complex again. I decided to do sash windows first because they're kind of the most complex window beyond like stained glass or anything like that. But the types of windows that you're going to see a lot of in the game, um, these are probably the most complex. And so the other windows should be simple based off this as a master one. Um, but yeah, so I can adjust the height and the width. Um, and it's, ad it's adjusting the ratio and the proportions of the window for me. Um, so let me just set, reset this back to what it was. I get a standard size. Um, yep. Then I can choose the, where the bars are. So I can just say, I have them in the bottom. I have them in the top. I can say how many I want. So I can have loads of vertical bars if I want or none, or, you know, just horizontal bars, more of those very simple. Um, then the system, just like with tessellation, the whole thing will ball itself. So one of the issues that I've got is that you can see there's some Z fighting going on here in some of the textures. You can see here, there's like where the parts placed together are, there's Z fighting. So to get around that, you can just do a self union. So just tick that box and uh, it takes a second. So I always try and basically uh, offload ball operations, just do a one and done, if you see what I mean. I don't want them running on every different, um, every tick of the construction script. So there you go, that's clean that model up. Um, and yep, you, I can then generate a new static mesh from it. And just like before, swap to a static mesh. Change my camera speed again. And yeah, drop it in the window. I'm working on a system where the window generator will also function as a cutter itself. So I don't have to use these two different tools, but yeah, there we go in game view. There's the window with the apron and everything in place. Um, and yeah, just like all the others, it can use different textures. So I can change it to like a wooden window if I want to, um, change the glass to be more clean, more dirty. Yeah, and it's all dynamic and it's all nanite as well. So actually I tell a lie the, with these windows, cause they're transparent, they have a transparent texture. Don't use nanite yet. Last little bonus tool then is my stair builder, which I'm still working on just like all the others. Um, at the moment it only does a Victorian style staircase. Uh, but it will do others as well. I'm going to make like a data table that contains all the different mesh variables and, and spacing and sizing for different styles of um, uh, stairwell, stairwell, stairway. Um, yeah, but like the others, it uses a spline. So if I get a hold of this and draw out another spline, it'll draw segments of the stairwell, creates a landing as well, halfway up. 
Um, it does not do curved stairs around corners yet, though. I may give that a go, but that, yeah, that's somewhat complicated. Um, the maths involved with working out the height difference and yeah, no. Um, but yeah, it, it just goes and goes and you can make quite complex stairways with it because they're always a nuisance um to to do in with models and then fit them to your architecture they're always different you want kind of want them to be different as well as soon as you've got the same mesh in several houses people get bored of it very quickly and these tools allow everything to be like different sizes shapes and materials very quickly so yeah it's uh it's just something i'm working towards anything my approach basically is that anything that is repetitive that's mechanical in nature i'm going to attack but i've also seen some people doing some environmental stuff using geoscript like snow on objects that's one i want to look at um, but i also want to see if i can build a tool that will fold existing tessellated meshes to the landscape so you could what you could do is you could get a large area that was just a flat square you could use a material to tessellate it and then shape it to the landscape and have that happen over a large area so instead of having to manually place thousands of meshes like they did in the early unreal 5 demos the system would do it for you you'd pick an area where you've got a landscape already set up and then just populate it with these protruding tessellated meshes and each one is a nanite mesh so it's all handled by that that's the that's the vision anyway um but yeah hopefully there's something here that might spark your imagination and get you working in geoscript um but yeah if you've got any ideas let me know in the comments below